For the first section, we might fill in more details like this. First of all, we should put in clear all or something similar at the beginning of our code so we don't use any variables or arrays that aren't specifically defined in our code. Then we have some fundamental parameters like mu naught and epsilon naught. So these are good to define early on. You can set them to the permeability and primitivity corresponding to free space. Since these are fundamental parameters, it's good practice to enter them into your code down to at least the level of single precision. You know, for single precision, it's probably a good idea to include eight decimal places. Now, we also want to add comments to our code so we can keep track of what everything is. Also, later, if you come back to this code in months or even years, or someone else does, you'll be able to figure out how the code works, or they will. You might be surprised at how quickly you can forget or lose track of how a code works or what it does. The percent signal symbol in MATLAB can be used to define a comment, so you can write whatever you want after that. So actually, at the very beginning of your, of your code, I would recommend you add a comment describing what the code is. So this code, so forth. You may even want to add a version number or a date to indicate when you last worked on it. All right, so going on, next you can set delta t, and you can't have the delta sign, so maybe call it dt is equal to something. We're going to have dx is equal to something. Uh, we don't know what yet, so you can just leave that blank for now. We also need to define the coefficients, ca, cb, da, db. And we will want to define the ez and the hy arrays. You may need to define other variables, but these, all of this on this page, these are the main ones. To initialize the ez and the hy arrays, we need to decide how large to make these arrays. That is, we need to decide how many A EZ components and HY components we want to have in our grid. Since we started our grid on an EZ component here, let's also end our grid on an EZ component so that the grid is symmetrical. Later, we will talk about boundary conditions and what impact there is in starting and ending a grid on an EZ component. Then in order to figure out how big to make our EZ and HY arrays, let's number them starting from the left side. So I'm going to put here a 1 for the first EZ and 2. This will be this, the second number stored in the EZ array and 3 and so forth. And then this will be the first number in the HY array. And here this will store the second number in the HY array. We don't know the actual number of grid cells we eventually want to run our model as having uh, for the avalanche scenario. So let's just say that there are I max number of grid cells. There's I max number of EZs, which means that there's going to be I max minus one number of HYs. Okay, so we want the EZ array to be able to store I max numbers and the HY array to store I max minus one numbers. When we create these arrays, it's good practice to initialize them to something. What should we initialize these values to? Well, let's initialize all the values in these arrays to zero to start with, so that we don't start with any stray electromagnetic fields in our grid. We want the electric and the magnetic fields we model to be from the plane wave that we initialize and initiate in the grid. In MATLAB, we can use zeros to create EZ and HY arrays of the correct size and also to initialize them to zero all at once. Now note that MATLAB annoyingly creates a two-dimensional matrix of size IMAX times IMAX if you write EZ is zeros IMAX. So we don't want a two-dimensional array. So instead, I'm going to put an X through that. Instead, I recommend you write zeros IMAX comma one. This will make a 1D array that stores IMAX numbers. Using this approach, you can call on, for example, the first number in the easy array 
by typing in EZ1. Now notice that we're introducing some additional parameters like IMAX uh, that we should define and set once at the beginning of the code and reuse throughout the code. I recommend you define as many parameters as you can so that later you don't have to go through your entire code and change individual numbers. You can just change one number, like what IMAX is equal to, once early in the code and it will automatically reuse that same number throughout the code whenever you write IMAX. If we follow the same notation for the number of time steps, we would use nmax to say the number of time steps that we want to solve Maxwell's equations over. So you want to define that as well. Well, this looks like a good start for the first section of the code. So now let's spend a couple minutes adding more detail to the second section of the code, solve Maxwell's equations across a region of space and for a segment of time. Add enough detail so that you could start to turn your notes into a working code as a next step.